I've made about $5,000 worth of passive income in the last 12 months. I'm going to show you how I did it. Now, if you've been watching me for a while, you already know that I've railed against the idea of passive income. The concept of passive is a misnomer, but I honestly believe if you put in enough hard work, then it becomes slightly easier to make income off the back of that hard work. If you want to see a video in which I pretty much barrel into passive income, it's up here. Now, passive income's really good for keyword and SEO, so forgive me, but today I'm gonna to show you how I make my income through passive income-based affiliate links and other means. One, match your niche to Amazon links. Let's say you're a gamer and you always use a certain controller or a certain webcam, or you've got certain software that you use, or there's a game that you happen to be playing. You can link from Amazon through their affiliate program and their influencer program to those products in the description down below. They are then directly relevant to you and your audience and more likely to generate a conversion. Let's say if you're into fitness or into food, you could, once again, link to recipe books, link to cookware, link to specific sources or specific meal plans or other companies that are doing exactly what you're doing. This is the easiest entry level thing that you can ever do. You simply sign up for the affiliate link program at Amazon. You make sure that it's linked to a a site that can generate enough traffic to get at least one sale within the first six months and then they fully activate your account and then you just keep linking and the more videos you put out there with affiliate links the more possible potential links you can create i have 400 odd videos on this channel most of them have some kind of affiliate links for the equipment that i'm using and therefore they're mini adverts that can continually potentially act as passive lead traffic towards amazon and sales two make product reviews I've done it on this channel myself. I've got a brand new camera or a brand new microphone and I've reviewed that product and put it up on my YouTube channel. Nobody sent me a camera, nobody sent me a microphone. I've received it for say Christmas or I've upgraded because I've needed it and I've reviewed accordingly. I've then linked to that product in Amazon and or if I get a chance, link to that company's kind of affiliate arrangement scheme. Basically, once you've got your hands on a product and you can review a product and you build up once again a base of that product, it's the best way to kind of sell that product, especially once again, if you are focusing on your niche. Gamers will want to hear from gamers about their latest and best scuff controller or their keyboard or their monitor. YouTube creators will want to know what camera and microphones you're using, what tripod you are using or how you're vlogging on the go. If you're already upgrading over time, let's say I've got three years worth of content on this channel, I could have built up many reviews. I should really do more product reviews, let's be honest. But there's many channels out there that are dedicated to getting hold of a product, reviewing that product, either having an agreement with that company for money or not, and then pushing traffic towards Amazon. I know that other YouTube creators such as Roberto Blake were making a large amount of money. He's actively spoke about how he's made two, three, four thousand dollars a month. In some cases, in the past, up to fifteen, twenty thousand dollars per month in affiliate income when it comes to his laptops and his cameras. Three, join open and free affiliate schemes. There are many schemes out there that you can join for absolutely no money. Things like vidIQ, Amazon, Audible, Rev.com, Placeit, TubeBuddy. I mean, the list is huge. There's no hoops that you have to jump through for entry and you'll then get your own customizable affiliate link, in some cases, discount codes, and you can place them in the description down below. And every now and then either name drop them or just leave them there and passively hope that other people use those links. The advantage I have is that I make tutorials. Every now and then I'll mention the power of subtitles and I'll say, you know, Description down below, there's a rev link, you'll get a 20% coupon or you'll get a 20 pound coupon and I can then push traffic that way that generates affiliate income for me. The advantage of them being open affiliates is that you don't have to qualify for them, you don't have to have a certain amount of subscribers, a certain amount of traffic, you can sign up and it's yours. Four, direct affiliate arrangements. There are some places out there like Awin and Commission Junction that acts as some kind of search engine in which you sign up to Commission Junction and then you can pick and search from many other people that work with Commission Junction or AWIN, but basically it's like a giant directory and then you can kind of pick the ones that are relevant. Five, affiliate arrangements. Now, I do quite well on these. I'll go out my way, I'll hunt out a business, I'll show them my content and show them what I've done in the past, whether it's product reviews or whether it's affiliate links or traffic that I've got from other affiliate programs. I'll haggle with them whilst offering value. Look, I can post on my YouTube channel, I can post on my Twitter, I've got my Instagram, I've got a Facebook profile, I've got a podcast, I have a mailing list. And then in return, you can talk about the cookies 
basically the cookie is how long if I send you to a website that I get credit for that sale. In some cases it's as little as seven days. In some cases they are lifetime cookies so you sent them to that website for the very first time and now no matter when if they was to buy something from them in three years time because you was the one that introduced them to the brand you'll get a slice of that pie. I suggest the longer the cookie the better because obviously it gives you a a greater chance of getting that sale, especially if you've done all the hard work. But then there are other styles of affiliate arrangements. Some will pay you straight out for a sale. Now I've got an affiliate arrangement with Rev.com. There's an affiliate referral link down below if you want to do it yourself. And every time someone signs up to Rev.com and uses their service, I'll get anywhere between 75 and 100 bucks for them using it for the very first time, but not after that. Others will work on a residual monthly basis. So if you sign up with them and you sign up for a membership, say 15 pound a month, I will get a sign up bonus of say 15 bucks and then a percentage of your membership every month until you stop it. These can be smaller to start with but can snowball fantastically well. I've got one specific affiliate program that's making me around about 250, 300 bucks a month because I've been with them for a long time and I've slowly built up that affiliate recurring income. Or some won't offer you an affiliate income but may offer you some kind of mini retainer. Some kind of, I'll give you 100 bucks, 150 bucks, 200 bucks a month and you name drop us or make a video once a month or that kind of thing. Six, sell digital products. A digital product is a great way for you to build your own product to push people towards. Let's say I created a service where for 50 bucks you could get 100 YouTube thumbnails, some branding, some banner art, some fonts, some video ideas. I put a load of time into creating that, say a good week or two weeks worth of content and curation. That might cost me a couple hundred bucks to create or some time that I should have been selling to another client, that kind of thing. But I now have that product. I upload that product and then I host it somewhere and then it's forever my product. I can push people towards it to buy it. Let's say it cost me 200 bucks to make and I make three sales at 75 quid, then I've made my money back. The best thing about it is that you've made it once and you can sell it over and over and over again. Not only do you get their email address because they're a customer, but you continue to add value. You get a better ROI, return on investment when it comes to a digital product. You also get a bigger slice of the pie, like an affiliate program. If you're pushing them to Amazon, you'll get a percentage, anywhere between seven and up to 20% at most. But if it's your own digital product, you get 100% of the value of the sale, subject to you giving out a discount code or some freebie as part of some kind of package somewhere. Link it into all of your videos. It advertises your product. Every now and then you could name drop it or, you know, make a dedicated video about branding that, oh, you know, you can but forever and a day that product is yours and the more digital products you have the more chance that they'll trickle in and buy seven blogs now i understand that everybody's focused on youtube and everyone's focused about making money through banner ads and everything on youtube but if you're already creating content don't miss out on the easy win of hosting your content with rich visual videos into a blog and then monetizing that blog if you go to alanspicer.com it's my revamped branded website, but before that I had my own web development blog and I blogged my content. The advantage of this is that I can establish my brand, but I can also run relevant adverts against my blogs and I get a trickle of either affiliate links, once again, that are embedded within that blog or adverts served against it. I can sell space on my blog for people that want to specifically advertise their product or service. And it hooks them into my site and my brand. Maybe they'll watch another video of mine or whatever. You can sell the ability to have guest bloggers on your site. Basically, although the written word was seemingly five, 10 years ago, there's still an audience that will continue to read or listen or watch. And if you can simply transcribe your videos or write a nice blog around it, you can embed a couple of videos in it. It helps your YouTube views, it helps your authority, and it gives you yet another place to promote yourself adds additional leverage to you in your haggling. Yet another place, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, blog, email list, etc., etc. Number eight, podcasts. Now I have the Start Creating Podcast, available at startcreatingpodcast.com, where I rant about what's in my head and I share my YouTube tips and my business, I talk about mental health. It's a way for me to break out of my niche, but also still yet again, offer another vehicle for people to buy into me, whether they want to promote my podcast, whether they want to talk about a specific topic, whether I want to put adverts and mid-rolls in the middle of the podcast. You can either sell ads directly from the business to you, or you can hook up with things like Anchor that has it built in to their podcasting app, but only if you're in the US. 
Shame on you, Anchor. What about us British people? And of course there are platforms out there very much like FameBit for YouTube sponsorships, but for podcasts. It's called Podcorn, in which, once again, you match your brand and your niche up to other advertisers. You pitch that you can represent their brand, and then, if they're happy, you can start advertising them on your podcast with whatever arrangements they offer you. Nine, this one is fairly new to me, but the more I read, the more it makes perfect sense. If you have a bit of money, if you've done all of the others, why not invest it into index funds and dividend stock? Index funds are the safe alternative of growth in the stock market over an extended period of time. These aren't those penny stocks that you've seen in the Wolf of Wall Street. These are a collective diverse amount of shares from businesses internationally, and it slowly tracks over the course of 10, 15, 20 years. If you've got money that you don't mind seeing going up and down, but over time more likely up than down, then an index stock will help you. I personally use Vanguard, and year on year over the last eight years or so, they've been anywhere between eight and 10%. As long as you don't mind riding the ups and downs, and you are calm, and you understand that over an extended period of time, they always do better than just a standard savings account. And all you have to pretty much do is put money in and regularly top it up, maybe more shares monthly or yearly, that kind of thing. Most experts suggest monthly, and that's what I'm doing. Then over time, it kind of levels itself out. That way you make sure that you hit the 10 best trading days of the year, which will mitigate the 10 worst trading days of the year, and overall it will lift. Even Warren Buffett, one of, if not the richest man on earth, suggests that index funds is the best way to go, because nobody can out-trade an index fund in 90% chance of the time. Now, dividend stocks are slightly different. You buy big companies that pay small chunks of dividends to you on a regular basis. I will link to other YouTubers in the description down below that can explain this better, but the way it works is, is that if you can invest in, say, Disney and ExxonMobil and Tesla, large companies that you expect to not fail, Walmart and Tesco's and airlines and food brands, etc., etc., they will slowly over time pay you money and you get to keep the value of the stock. So you can either reinvest those dividends, or once you get to a certain amount, that could be your monthly income from dividends, and you can let the principal sit with the stock and let it grow. Or you can decide to be less passive and start your own business. There's a video here and a playlist here. Subscribe for regular business tips and trick tutorials.